Jeremy, it's twice now. I told you to tell me where to start. Hi, welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. New sponsor, as you can tell by getting me caught eating, Magic Spoon, delicious cereal that's actually quite healthy for you and makes me sound when I talk with my mouth full. My mother is going to be so disappointed in me. But you guys can make her feel better about it by getting five bucks off at magicspoon.com slash Cowboys. That's right. Five bucks off your first order on delicious and also very healthy cereal. That's magicspoon.com slash Cowboys. Check them out today. All right. Into the rumors, right? Look what's back again. The Michael Gallup trade. This time focusing on, hey, could it come midseason? I mean, maybe, but my expectations mean I'm giving this just one star. I would be pretty surprised if the Cowboys dealt Gallup this season. Because I think they're going to be a good football team. And if they're a good football team, they don't need to trade Michael Gallup. Now look, if the Cowboys are bad, if they struggle, okay, maybe that's a conversation that we can have. And Gallup very well might not be back in 2021. And even though this gets me in trouble in my personal life, this is what I call a future Tom problem. I, I got Michael Gallup on the roster, part of the best trio of wide receivers or second best, third best, or whatever in the NFL. I, I got a good thing going right now. I don't have to worry about that at this moment. I, I can check in on that later on this offseason. That's, that's not the priority or concern for me. Because Michael Gallup, folks, as I'm sure we all know, is very good at the football thing. He's good at it. And in a disappointing year for the Cowboys offense because the offensive line was hurt, the quarterback was hurt. Gallup still put up almost 900 yards. He's a good football player. So the Cowboys don't have to move on from Gallup right now. They can keep him and be just fine. So what do you guys want to do then with Michael Gallup? At least as it relates to this season. Remember, you'll get a comp pick for him in all likelihood, even if you lose him. And it's probably the same you get him back in a trade. So, you know, why move on from him at that point? So let me know what you guys think. Type T for trade or type in K for keep. Here's my mindset. If you're the Cowboys, you should only trade Michael Gallup if they're bad. And if you can get more or equal to what you will get in the comp pick process. Now, it comes a year later, so you're kind of benefiting from the extra half year or so of Gallup being on your roster if you keep him. But if the, da if the Cowboys are bad, sure. Trade Gallup, get another asset for this year, help you, you know, quicken your rebuild in the long run. And again, you've got Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, potentially for next year. Of course, I think Cooper's status is a little bit more uncertain. But if you're the Cowboys, you don't have to move on from him in the immediate future. You can stick with him for a little bit longer. Now, maybe Stephen Philco becomes your number three. If so, cool, awesome. But for the time being, you're fine. You can keep Michael Gallup and benefit from having a dynamic number two or number three receiver on your roster. Folks, we finally have a sponsor here at the Cowboys Report that really gets me to my core. I love peanut butter. It is my favorite food. I eat it all the time. Turns out, kind of fatty and not always good and has helped lead to this dad bod that I'm cultivating here for better or really more for worse. Now, Magic Spoon's making it a little bit easier. I, mean, I can get my peanut butter fix and make it healthy in the process as well. The peanut butter version... 14 grams of protein. Most of their other brands of flavors, 13 grams of protein. They've all got zero sugar, by the way, and I don't know if you guys have been making stuff on your own. There's so much sugar in everything. And unlike some of the other knockoff cereals that are healthy for you, this actually tastes good. Tastes like real good peanut butter. Only 140 calories, by the way, in each serving. It is absolutely fantastic from that one. So I love it. And I think you guys will as well. So go try some out today. You can save five bucks off your first order when you go to magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Oh, by the way, it's not the only type of flavor. The peanut butter is just one of them. They got a whole bunch of others like the fruity, like the blueberry that you see on screen right now. They've got frosted as well. Some delicious options, cocoa as well, which Jeremy tells me in my ear. So five bucks off at magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Don't worry, folks. We'll make your lives easy as well. We'll put a clickable link in there for you in the comment section and in the description so that you can get some delicious, healthy breakfast food for you guys from our friends over at Magic Spoon. Go check them out today. All right, next up, Jabril Cox. Is he a future starter for the Cowboys? Floated out there by the Dallas Morning News. 
I say probably. I'm giving it three stars, and if he's not, I for one will be pretty disappointed because I think Cox has the ability to be an impact player. Now, he was a viewed as a steal, fourth round pick. I thought he should have gone, you know, late round two, early round three, somewhere in that range. I think he was my number six or number seven linebacker. I can't remember which exactly. My hope, and I think for both the Cowboys, for Cox himself, and, you know, for everyone watching, is for him to be the future weak side linebacker starter. And the biggest reason why I have so much faith and hope in Jabril Cox is because of his coverage impact. Coverage matters in today's NFL. It matters significantly. And I think that's a good thing for the Cowboys that Jabril Cox offers that. So for now, he's probably stuck behind Leighton Van Der Esch and Keanu Neal as it relates directly to the weak side linebacker spot. Now, LVE can play some Mike, but I think he's better weak side. Same with Jabril Cox or, and, and Keanu Neal. So I don't know if Cox will be starting by season's end. But I want you guys to get your votes in for me. Do you think that will actually end up being the case? Get your votes in the comment section. Pretty straightforward here. Type in Y for yes and for no. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and get your votes in. Again, coverage matters. I have evolved my thinking in the way that I operate with the NFL. Coverage is king. It is the number one most important thing. 5, 10, 15, however long you want to go back years ago, a lot more focused on having big mauling guards and, and great run stoppers and linebackers that can hit and, and fill the hole. Now, I don't mind going light. I want to be able to have guys who can cover. And Jabril Cox has legitimate and real concerns when it comes to run stopping. I didn't think he was very good, but he almost played like a safety out there. Now, I'm going to keep him at linebacker, because in 2021, I would rather have extra linebacker safeties playing linebacker or just linebackers who can cover like Jabril Cox. That is what he offers. And I think that's an important fact to remember for the Cowboys. So maybe it's not year one, but down the road, I do expect Jabril Cox to be a starter for this team. Let's talk Noah Brown now here on the Dallas Cowboys report. Is he on the roster bubble? I'm giving this one straight up. Four stars. And I know Noah Brown re-signed with the Cowboys in the offseason, and he's a good special teamer, and if he's your number four, number five receiver, you're probably in pretty good shape at that position. But that does not mean he's guaranteed to make this team. I might be a member of 85 Hive, but I'm also being realistic here. Because the Cowboys save $850,000 if they were to, to release Noah Brown. The way his contract is set up, with 137.5K guaranteed on his new deal, that is not indicative of somebody who is guaranteed a roster spot. In reality, he's fighting for one. He's fighting for one with Cedric Wilson, who, by the way, also on the roster bubble with what amount of money could be saved by cutting him, two million bucks. That could be a, a game changer there, but he's also your backup punt returner. So I think Wilson's over Noah Brown. I think long term, the Cowboys want Simi Fehoko to be a number three or four or whatever receiver on this team. Maybe he's ready year one. If he is, that could jeopardize Noah Brown. I like Noah Brown. He is more than just the light end type of player that Jason Garrett utilized him. He does offer some good blocking, but he does show, has shown flashes of being a good receiver too. But we also have to be realistic with what he's done in his NFL career. Namely, he hasn't really done all that much. He hasn't been an impactful playmaker. And oh, by the way, we can go back to that depth chart there, Producer Jeremy, that there are multiple undrafted free agents on this roster who are going to be fighting just like Noah Brown for one of those last roster spots. Can you know Malik Turner beat out Noah Brown? Very similar players that special teams focus there. I like Noah Brown more. That's why he's ahead of him on the depth chart. But maybe one of the UDFAs. Brandon Smith got a good, a good amount of money out of Iowa. Osiris Mitchell, Brennan Eagles, TJ Vasher fit that giant red zone receiver the Cowboys really don't have right now. In the end, when it comes to wide receiver 4 slash 5 and or 6, what matters the most is special teams. Special teams will end up deciding these last roster spots. When we get to the preseason game, I guess number 3 this year for the Cowboys, take a close look 
at who's out there on your first team special teamers. If Noah Brown is out there, he probably makes the team. If he's not, he might not make it, and the Cowboys might cut him and save a little under a million bucks. Now, I lean right now to yes, Noah Brown makes this team. But I want you guys to get your votes in as well. Will Noah Brown make the roster in 2021? Type 1 for yes, he will, or type in 0 for no. Now, this was basically a little preview of videos we got coming down the pipeline. Roster battles. Now, it's almost training camp, so I've held off on doing these, but I'm excited about them. We're going to go in-depth this year on these roster battles. Receiver, tight end, offensive line, basically every single spot on the defensive side of the ball. There'll be general ones and ones focused in on specific positions. So if you want to stay updated before camp gets going in Oxnard, hit that big red button and subscribe today. Next up is the O-line health, specifically Tyron Smith, Lael Collins, Zach Martin. The most important thing for the Cowboys. Dak Prescott says so, but I am only going to give this two stars. And I get it, there's really nothing else Dak would say from Dak's perspective, and for what he's going to say publicly, he's right. And we'll get to his quote momentarily, but I'm only giving it two stars for a reason we'll get to in just a second. Here's what Dak had to say, and he's right, this is super important. Quote, they're the most important, he said, referring to Colin Smith and Martin, if you ask me. From the time I got drafted until now, this offense is built off those guys. They're the three most veteran guys on this team, and that's for a reason. Those guys are walk-in Pro Bowl guys when they're healthy, future Hall of Famers. Just have to have those three guys lead the five guys up front. Everything starts with them. The run game that allows the passing game to open up, when you have those guys back healthy, it's energized, it's special. And look, Dak Prescott is right that the offensive line is incredibly important. With Ty if Tyron Smith and, and Leo Collins play even 15 games this year, the O line is going to be in great shape. All right, it's it's fine to have Tyler Biotish and Connor Williams as your worst two offensive linemen. If that's the case, your O line's probably pretty damn good. When Connor Williams is the only one left up there because of injuries, well, then your offensive line is not going to be very good. So with the injuries in mind, how confident are you in the offensive line this year? Rate it for me on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being that you've got just the absolute most confidence in the O-line, or at least confidence. 10 being you feel great, everyone's going to be healthy, and the 1 being you're freaking out, right? Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Because I mentioned those injuries, right? Tyron Smith plays in two games last year due to a neck injury. He's missed at least a couple games every year for five years in a row. Lael Collins, the hip issue. Hopefully he's in better shape this time around. Zach Martin tried to play through a calf issue, got shelved down the stretch. He's a future Hall of Famer. Tyler Biotish got the job because Joe Looney got hurt, then Biotish got hurt, and then Looney ended up keeping it. Not to mention the litany of offensive linemen who were b backup tackles who got hurt. Cam Irving, Brandon Knight missed time, Terrence Steele got benched. They were down to tackle five last year. That's unheard of. So if the O-line stays healthy, the offense will be better. But I don't think Dak was right when he said the offense line was the most important part. And I would never expect nor really want Dak Prescott to say the truth. That he is the most important thing. The O-line was banged up when Dak was healthy last year. And they were still finding ways to compete against playoff teams that, frankly, they should have been blown out of the water against because the defense was hot garbage. If Dak Prescott is healthy, this team will be a playoff contender this year. If Dak Prescott goes down, they will not. So, yes, the O-line, the health of Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, and L. Collins, that's the number two most important thing for this Cowboys team. The number one, that's the quarterback, and that's Dak Prescott. 